Hello, this is a tutorial on creating tank treads. This will be making an array and stringing it along a path. Alright, so what I have here is an example of how that works. And the tank treads, the trapezoid shaped objects that have been arrayed, are flowing around this um, series of wheels. Um, Obviously this is a real um, rough mock-up. The focus on the tutorial is to show you how to string the, the array along a path. So first I will draw a path. Uh, let's take these and copy them. And I will go to a view where I can draw a line straight on looking down um, the local axis of each of these. just makes drawing splines a little easier. Um, I'm going to click, this is with the line tool, in a few spots where I can create the basic shape that I want. And I could do half of the spline and then mirror it and attach it together to get perfect symmetry or we can just eyeball it. Close the spline. Alright, so these are corner vertices right now. And there's the first one indicated by the white box. And if you select it, which turns to red, you'll see it's a corner versus a bezier where you have these node controls to adjust the tangent. But that's really uh, not necessary. What we're going to do is leave it like that until we have our object to string along that path. And we'll just call that uh, path 2. Now I'm going to make a box and then modify that box and then array the box. So I've just made a small box All right. and I'll make some quick adjustments to it just to give it a little bit of character and we'll make it similar but we won't worry about it being identical to the previous ones. Let's turn on F4 so I can see my segments And what I'll do is add an, an edit poly modifier and extrude, actually bevel these locally along the polygon. With a certain height and a certain amount of negative bevel. Alright. And that is going to be my first tank tread. Alright, very simple. We'll leave it at that. Now, I'm going to take a guess as to how many to copy. But as far as arraying it, I'd like it to be very close to the previous one. And I'm looking at the bottom of the screen at how much I've moved it over. And it's approximately eight, eight and a half inches. Let's just do 8.8 .8 in inches. All right, right click to cancel. And I'm going to do an array under Tools Array. I'm going to do 8.8 .8 inches. And I'm going to do approximately, well not approximately, but uh, 45. And just see how that looks and how that works. OK. Um, probably a few too many, I think. So let's just delete a few and just take a guess. Now, I'll leave one for um, the situation where I might come back and redo this uh, uh, string. Now I'm going to make the first one unique and I'm going to use the attach dialog to 
grab the other boxes, which I believe are 039 through 02. Attach. Okay. I'm going to do that again and just grab 038 through 02 to leave that last one alone. There we go. Now it's all one object. And here comes the fun part. I'm going to move the pivot point just a little bit to the front of the string. I'm calling this series of treads a string of geometry. Now we're going to select a path to form modifier and pick this path. Usually you get odd results right away. You move it to the path and you find the path to form access axis that works and I believe it's based on the viewport in which you drew the uh, original object and which uh, orientation the its local axis has so you can choose between X Y and Z and you can usually get um, the correct result I'm going to rotate it 180 so the treads stick up. All right. And we can play around with just scrolling the percentage, playing with the stretch. The stretch will actually help me sort of glue the edges together. And it takes more than just clicking the spinner. Sometimes you have to. type in values manually. All right. Let's try that and we'll leave it at that. All right. So now let's talk about um, the the deformation that occurs on the sides. Currently, it looks bad. If I were to play with the percentage, you'll see that warping of the geometry on the sides here. So let's go in to our line. We'll do F3. We'll go into path 2 and we shall turn on the vertex sub subobject option and refine our line a little bit. Now the way it's refined the distance between these vertices to each other is dependent on the shape of the object you're trying to array and string along the path. And it might take a few more vertices in this case to have a smooth transition. Now from a distance we're not going to really detect slight distortion. So I'm only concerned about this up to a certain point. Let's just make this a little bit more refined. We'll try it here with this corner and we're going to leave the other corners jagged just to reinforce the idea that there is a big difference between having a sharp corner and having a corner that's built for the shape and size of the actual piece of tread. All right. Now I'm going to click on that object and you can see there's minimal distortion on this corner. There is big distortion on the right side. Okay, so using the control and alt key I expanded my timeline to 300 frames from the default of 100 frames. And next I'm going to animate this tank tread by clicking on auto key after going to the frame at which I want to make a keyframe. And I'm going to crank up the percentage to 100, meaning it's going all the way around. Back at 0, it's at 4 where I had just left it and I can right click the spinner to go back to 0. So now from 0 to 100 percent 
that geometry moves along the path. However, we have a slight issue with the acceleration and deceleration that is inherent in animation within 3D Studio Max. So we go to the curve editor and we dig down into space warps, path to form binding, and the percent along path. Here are the two keyframes from 0 to 300, from 0 to 100 percent, and we make that path linear and now we should have a smooth transition from beginning to end. It's smoother here from a distance you won't notice any major distortion from here it looks bad on this side where there's where there are fewer vertices on the path. I want to pause it, turn on F3 and just uh, allow for a better view here. Let's do P for perspective Alt Z lets me quickly zoom in with the magnifying glass without having a camera. And now we have tank treads that move along a path.